Hello, this is Cherie Burton. Thank you for joining me here on Women Seeking Wholeness. We are excited to bring you some really cool conversations around how to up level as a human, how to survive this really interesting time in the world, which we've all been prepared for on some level. And in particular today, talking about quitting the comparison game and how it's really, really toxic to compare ourselves and why we do it naturally and why it never ever works. So we're going to talk about the differences between healthy competition, how we can get into like this damaging uh, achievement paradigms of go, go, go and kill it and whatever. But Delia Perry is my guest today. She's a mom, a former collegiate athlete, and she has a podcast called Girls for Greatness. Remember that you can go to standspeakshine.com and pick up my free multisensory healing kit. It's kind of a one-stop shop for coming back into self-nourishment, grounding yourself, which we do talk about in this episode, how to ground and what that means. But I have a free downloadable PDF, kind of fun little lookbook that you can access. Grab that healing kit on shereeburton.com or standspeakshine.com. So here we go, talking about the comparison game. Well, Delia, is that how you pronounce it? I know, I know we've talked before a lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, right. it's fine. It's Delia, but a lot of people say Delia, so it's it's totally okay. It's like kind of like when you're on my show and I said Sherry, and you're like, it's Sherry. <laughs> I told you, <laughs> and I told you too late, and I feel bad for that. But no, no, it's fine. Now, it's a thing, though. There's an energetic thing, like when someone says your name, and it's it's not exactly how your parents named you. And then yeah. you, and you're just like, they're part of a part of your soul is like, Ooh, like there's this little thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's totally okay. Well, let's talk about your, let's talk about your journey. Let's hit on, you know, how you got to where you're at because you, you are this brilliant podcaster and you, um, you're doing a lot of good work in the world, but I know it never comes, you know, easy. There's always, mm-hmm. there's always been a cost to get you to where you're holding a microphone, so to speak. So what's your path? What happened? What was your pain point? Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. This is truly an honor um, to be talking to you again. Um, well, I think for me, um, you know, I was really blessed in the sense that I had a really um, great upbringing and I felt like my self-esteem was pretty much intact. Um, until I got to college, I was a, you know, I was a college athlete and, um, that's kind of when I think I kind of look at it as my awakening to the whole idea of comparison, the whole idea of just, um, maybe my weight or how I looked being something that was scrutinized to us to a point or something that was just, you know, criticized, um, and I, I know that seems kind of harsh, but I, I guess in a way it was just that was brought to the forefront of my mind um, in a way that it never had been before. Um, and I know a lot of girls, a lot of teenagers, girls, I mean, gosh, it starts at such a young age now, you know, are dealing with those same issues now so much earlier. Um, so from that standpoint, you know, yeah, I've always said I feel so fortunate, but at the same time, it, it, it still was was painful. It was a pain point that I had to, to work through and deal with, um, definitely through my college career and, and then bringing those self-esteem issues into my marriage, into, um, you know, a lot of my thirties, most of my thirties and, 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 you know, part of my forties. And before I really, I think started to really understand, um, you know, the damage that I had done, to myself in my own self-talk and my own, um, you know, struggles mentally, um, how I was taking that on, how that was being reflected in my relationships, in just who I was as a human being, how I felt about myself. And it just took a, a lot of work rewiring all of that. And believe me, I mean, as with anything, I think a lot of us would say that, you know, we're always a constant work in progress and that nothing ever completely goes away. But we learn, um, I was fortunate to, you know, to pick up some really great tools and, um, you know, the hard work that I put in really has been of great benefit, you know, now in, in these years where I've, um, 
kind of just made a shift and been able to start things like my podcast and right. so on. So in your lowest point, it was just, I mean, I see this happen actually, you know, you would think that if somebody has a, I don't want to say idyllic childhood, no one does, but if you mm-hmm. had a lot of love and support and validation and you felt seen and you felt heard and, and you, and you had um, a healthy emotional upbringing and it's, and you felt safe and all of that. Sometimes that can actually be um, a challenge as you go out in the world and you realize that not every, not every relationship dynamic is safe and that the world is not as safe as you thought because, you know, you were a little bit protected. Um, And so for some people, it's so interesting. It's so paradoxical because we think that it's, you know, having not had to pass through a lot of trauma with parents or dysfunctional family, we would think that that would set the stage for this, you know, beautiful life. And in some respects, it's a great gift, but in some respects, it's almost like, I don't want to say it's a disservice, but it doesn't always create a lot of emotional resilience because you haven't had to work, you know, so it is paradoxical. Yeah. 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 That's a really good point. I I haven't thought of it that way. Um, And I, and I, think that's a really great point. Um, yeah, I think in a lot of ways I was probably sheltered. I grew up in a really small town and a really, um, small school, um, with friends that were a lot like me. We were really academically and, um, athletically focused Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, you're right. I could definitely see how that could be, you know, but you had, you know, you were obviously you were excelling in sports. What was your sport? Um, I was a volleyball player, a volleyball and softball player, but primarily volleyball. Wow. Yeah. So you played college volleyball Mm -hmm. into college volleyball. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm assuming, I mean, I know it takes a lot of, uh, discipline to get to that stage. Mm -hmm. Uh, was, did you have the perfection thing going like, (laughs) Was that? that... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't look at it as I had to be perfect to get um, attention or to get praise. I I never had that quote unquote pressure like from my parents um, or from my friends even. I mean, we had, I would say, if someone asked me this the other day, I think, you know, my friends and I, we had a healthy competitive spirit about us. We pushed each other whether it was on the court or it was on, you know, it was in academics. Um, I was really fortunate in that, but I think um, that perfectionism shifted big time um, and became, I guess, uh, you know, something that wasn't as healthy in college. And, and I think the shift really occurred when I started to look at it more of a comparison, comparing myself to others, like I don't measure up, you know, and, and that started me down a different path for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that morphed for you where you, it, it went from healthy competition to something different, something we could say maybe a little darker, but maybe you just didn't have, you have the skills now to look back and see that that was playing out. Uh, and I know you and I have talked before about like the comparison game Mm -hmm. and how do you get out of that? How for someone like with your background who has had a degree of achievement and you've excelled and, and you've kind of stood out right in, especially in athletics and other things. And now, you know, you're doing, you know, basically your, your collegiate athlete start in a different domain, right? In the, mm-hmm. in the way of mm-hmm. helping people, but your podcast is all about greatness. Yeah. And so how, how do you see greatness now? And then let's move into, cause I really want to explore that whole comparison game, but how would you define greatness? I think greatness, um, has a lot to do with how we make others feel the mark that we leave on the world. Um, it's a lot to do with focusing out and, and not being afraid to be who we, who we truly are and using the gifts and talents that we've been given in a powerful way to impact the world. But I, I think that that is not exactly 
possible in the the realm that I think, or that I should say, in the in the in the best way in terms of making the biggest impact we can have, if at the same time we're not content and we're not, um, and I say content, meaning we're not feeling like we are at our best ourselves, like we are, that we're okay with who we are and that we are not, like you said, comparing ourselves and constantly running ourselves down, but we're assured we're, we're, um, we're standing in who we are in our own truth and our own, own power and excuse me, unapologetically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I think that the two go hand in hand. Yeah. I, I would define greatness very similar. It's individuation. Yeah. It's, it's separating from the group think or the norm or, you know, the status quo and what everyone else is doing. I see this happening with the virus. Um, there mm. are very brave souls who are, you know, step in, they're not in the group think. And they're like, Hey, you know, can we think about this a different way? And, yeah. and, and they ask good questions, but I love how you said it's being who you are. It's just standing in who you are. And I always preface this podcast with, um, this is a podcast for women who long to mm. feel, express and be who they truly are. Mm. And that to me, that is, you know, you go to people's funerals and it feels like a life well lived is exactly what you were saying. How did they make others feel when they were mm -hmm. with them? Mm -hmm. Did they feel loved in their presence? Did they feel heard? Did they feel, you know, seen and validated? Kind of going back to what we were talking about with childhood. Yeah. Um, sometimes, and I see this happen a lot. Sometimes if someone grew up not feeling those feelings of mm -hmm. feeling seen, they will like overcompensate the, the, in the, if they step into their greatness, they will overcompensate and make sure that their own children feel that way and that everyone else feels that way. And that's how you know they've taken kind of their inheritance mm -hmm. and morphed it into beauty. And, yeah. and that is the greatness that that's, it's not like necessarily what you achieve, I guess is kind of where you and I agree, right? It's not, yeah, it's not about achievement. Right. Right. I definitely agree. Sheree. I definitely agree. I think, you know, um, I think putting good out into the world is so important, you know, to do that in our own unique way, to be others focused. But at the same time, I just, I have, I really believe that that is hard to do if, you know, you're not, um, you know, pouring good into yourself, if you're not feeling, you know, you yourself assured in who you are as a, as a person yeah, and, you, you know, so yeah. yeah, you definitely have to feel that for yourself. Well, let's talk about the comparison game. Yeah. So obviously as we're talking about, it's all how you feel in your own skin. It's all how you stand yeah. in your own truth. And so comparison then would only happen if you're not grounded in you but it's uh, in saying that, like, it's so easy to meet someone maybe who's in the same field yeah. as you or who's doing what you're, you know, and they, especially with mothering, I have to say. Um, so how do you step out of that? Uh, <laughs> I know. I think, it's it, <laughs> I think it is hard. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert. I'm not, and I haven't totally overcome it myself. I mean, I've definitely gotten better as I've gotten older. Um, as I've become more, um, I think just, uh, you know, empowered in, in who I am. And, and I guess a lot of it has to do with self-love. It's, it's truly loving the person that you are inside and out. And I think sometimes when I say that, I say it, and I hear the words come out of my mouth and I think, you know, there's probably people listening going, Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that's so hard to do. And, you know, that's, that's, you know, you say that, but you know, if, if I'm not, you know, in love with how I look or this or that. And I think a lot of times we get tripped up in that outer part that, you know, we think it's, it's impossible to love the person that we are. But I think a lot of it comes down to realizing, you no, know, the real, the really important thing is just that who we are as a human being and, you know, where our heart is and, and how are we making others feel and, and what are we doing with our time? And, you know, what kind of mother yeah. are we? What kind of wife are we? What kind of friend are we, you know, and not, not being so wrapped up in that. I mean, so yeah, I think there is definitely a lot of, um, 
places where we can compare, not just, you know, in, in outward appearance, but like you said, like as a mother or in our careers with our coworkers. But I think a lot of it comes back to then grounding yourself, really grounding yourself in who you are as a person and, and where your priorities are, where your values are and what's important to you. Yeah. I, there's this, there's this quote by, I think it's Theodore Roosevelt. He said, comparison is the thief of joy. Yes. Yes. And I've seen this a lot um, as I've worked in business and then at church and then in family, you know, I have, I have lots of siblings, I have a big family. Um, I see this playing out everywhere. And I, and I know this cause I feel it in my own body and I have to consciously like you said, stay grounded in who I am because, um, there really, there really is no one like you. Mm-hmm. I am. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with the strengths finder test, but it's done through Gallup. Are you? Yeah. Familiar? I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So they are the, I think they're the most tested. They've tested, I want to say over 30 million people. So it's very well tested, but um, they have 34 strengths and we use them a lot in my business and just getting so I know where people's strengths lie and I can work with them. But it's so interesting because they gave the statistic that um, for someone to have the top, I think it's even like your top 10 strengths and there's only 34, right? Mm-hmm. For someone else on the planet to have your top 10 strengths in the same order as you is like a one in a billion something chance. It's crazy. Wow or maybe it's like tens of millions, but anyway, it's just almost like there's no, like there's, it's almost like impossible that there's anyone who's ever lived, who's had your same 34 strengths in the same order. Wow. 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 And so it's phenomenal. Um, and I look at my top strengths and then I look at my bottom five and I'm like, Oh wow. It would be really easy to go. I'm not good at that, but I, I should look at like, I'm really good at this. Right. And they say, don't focus on your bottom 24, focus on your top 10. So it's about enhancing what's already there, not trying to look at where you suck basically, or not where you suck, but where you're less gifted, we should say. Right, right. Um, and, And so that's really helped me. So if anybody out there wants to take the strengths finder test, it's like, it's like, it's like $20 to get your top 10 or something, but you should pay the whole 60 and get your top 34 because it, it's really helpful to see hmm. why would I compare myself against an illusion? Yeah. Someone that does not exist because I'm me and there's literally been no one else like me that has ever lived. Um, yeah. But with the, that's easy to say like, you know, mentally, <laughs> but to feel that emotionally to mm-hmm. really climb in and go, you know, mm-hmm. I'm really like one of a kind. How 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 have you found um, for that that helps you personally stay grounded? Because you mentioned the word grounded, I I teach that as well in my Stance Be Shine school. But how do you how do you find it helpful for you to ground? And let's and let's let's clarify what that means for the listeners who may not be familiar with that term. Yeah. I mean, um, I think grounded for me is, is, you know, coming back to, you know, who I am, what's, what's important, what's valuable. Um, for me, that looks like, um, you know, I have some daily practices that just really, um, like you said, ground, ground me each morning, whether that be, um, through journaling or through just writing out, um, a lot of times I write out just a personal message to myself. It's like maybe two sentences or whatever, but I put it in my, my planner. It's just a thought or something encouraging I can say to myself throughout the day. Um, a lot of times I write down um, just intentions in terms of who I want to be for that day. Um, so things like that, it, it brings me back to the goodness that I possess, my own um, you know, my own strengths, my own value as a human being. And when we fill our mind with that, I think we're much more apt to be able to, you know, withstand or, or even combat in our mind when we start to compare, we start to negatively run ourselves down. Yeah. So one of my favorite ways to ground is just through, um, I just say a few words in my mind 
Mm. And then I just close my eyes and breathe. Mm. And it sounds so simple. I know a lot of other people do this and I know people have yogic practices or mindfulness practices. I'm assuming some of yours are mindfulness. Yeah. My favorite thing to do is just to stop at when I find myself escalating and I find myself getting triggered around like feeling inadequate. Yeah. Because somebody showed up in my path to reflect back to me where I need to heal. And so I'll just put my hand on my heart and another hand um, under my belly, just like in that, you know, lower chakra or that uh, you mm-hmm. call it the womb space mm-hmm. or the gut area. And I just, I, my personal mantra is based um, just, I, I think I made it up. I haven't heard anywhere else, but it's just stop, breathe, receive. Mm. And it just reminds me to stop everything, breathe and just receive love, receive who I am, receive my own essence so that I'm centered, aligned and grounded in who I am. And I don't have to outsource my own worth. I don't have to look outside of me. It's all right here. And I'm responsible for that. Yeah. That's great. That's a really great practice. I love that. Yeah. What's your favorite go-to like in the moment, if you just get, ah, do you have one that you Um, love over another? I think, uh, I think just breath, um, maybe not necessarily words, but you know, we've talked about this even, I think when you were on my show, you know, it's the power of breath and I think it calms the mind. Um, it helps us shift out of a negative state or a state where we're maybe, um, you know, fired up. Um, that's really been powerful for me and something that I've just, you know, really, really started to put into practice probably in the last year. Um, it's, it's been a huge game changer for me. Mm. Yeah. I have to agree with breath and it really is just as simple as it, it really is just as simple. I mean, you can create a state change just by breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. And you don't even have to say words. Um, it's just, and that's probably more powerful to just even keep your mind clear and just experience yourself and breathe. And yeah. So, well, great. So we've covered kind of like Maybe it's okay to have a little bit of healthy competition, right? But where it goes dark is I'm less than, and that person shines brighter than me, and mm-hmm. you know, and then the whole you know barrage of like black thinking around that and just the damaging thoughts. Yeah. So, yeah, is there any is there anything else you would add for our listeners? I know that you have um, offerings, and um, we can certainly put those in the show notes. But is there anything that you would like to leave with us that um, maybe parting thought? Um, sure. Yeah, you know, I, I think I just, um, I'm a big believer in just people understanding that even if they don't have it all together, I certainly don't have it all together. I have so much to learn. Um, you know, things I'm still working on will always be working on. I'm forever a work in progress. I think, I think we all are, but that that is no reason to shortchange yourself or to think that you're not worthy of living the life you want to live or being the person you want to be, um, or that you're stuck in this state where you're, you know, not worthy of moving forward. I think, it's really important for each one of us to remind ourselves of who we are and the value that we possess as a human being. And that, you know, our life, you know, is ours for the making and, um, you know, it's a choice and that we, we all have that power within us to, to do what it takes Mm. to, to live the life we want to live. Absolutely. Yes. I, I would echo that. I would echo those thoughts. Um, It's beautiful when we finally wake up to our own worth and power and we don't need that outside validation. It's a nice bonus, but we don't need it anymore because we know who we are. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This has been really great. Thank you, Sheree. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It's been wonderful. I really appreciate the the opportunity. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's no one like you. You're one in a trillion, billion, kajillion. (laughs) Not even that. Literally, there is no one like you or ever will be like you. Your greatness lies in your uniqueness and not being afraid to be who you actually are. 
as you continue to ground yourself into who you are, the natural byproduct extension of that is your greatness emerging because your greatness is that diverse essence of your soul. You can always email me, Cherie at CherieBurton.com and introduce yourself and let me know what you love about the podcast. I'm always looking for great reviews to post and share this podcast with your friends. I would totally appreciate it. And I know there's so many who need these kinds of positive messages in such a crazy earth time. Have a beautiful week.